Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Julio Alejandro. I'm the director of Fruit Launching Companies. I've been existing for the last two years approximately, so we're quite uh, old experience in the sense. And the reason of, the, of, of this talk is I want to mention why and what are the circumstances that I think that you should have to make a wise advisement in buying either a cryptocurrency or participating in an ICO. Myself, I participated in three of them, Eternity, BitNation that is going at the moment, and we have built, in terms of the creating the design and participating in dissemination uh, of this, uh, of, of, of these ideas, of these technologies, over the past two years. So first, I want to mention what are the characteristics and what makes a cryptocurrency? What is the ideas that we should have in, uh, whenever we speak as a cryptocurrency? You don't know? I don't know. It doesn't show in here. So we'll have to go over it. There are more than cryptocurrencies. They usually serve three purposes. Before, they were just about speculation. A year ago, they were only about financial trading, commercial ideas and identity, and within the transaction and the finance itself. They didn't serve any other purpose when we're talking about Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, they're just simple speculation, usually to be bought or to be used within dark markets and buying drugs. As we progress, they start solving a use case. They start entering one of your particular industries, where it is its finance, technology, supply chain management, monetary affairs, political and governance. They start entering that area in your industry and they solve a problem that society has. They usually are redeemable in terms of a software, as if you would be buying the license, so you can use the software of, say, Microsoft Office, and there would be a crowdsource formula for an idea that hasn't been built yet. As we speak, there are seven cryptocurrencies that you can actually use them, that you can go and you can download it, and there's one form, one mechanism, where you can actually apply them in real life. Out of the 1,200 of them that exist, out of the $170 billion market, none of them have done it yet. Because what changes from the previous model to the new model is that before you had to have a minimum viable product, you would launch it in alpha internally, you would launch it in beta uh, externally, then you would create it live, ready to be reproduced. With an ICO in cryptocurrency, you only need to have a superstar, a very important CEO, that CEO we will tell you, we have built all of this in the past, you can check it in GitHub, and because of my reputation, I promise you that just by creating a piece of paper, what we call a white paper, and that white paper having a very small demonstration and explanation of how in one year, or two years, or three or five years, something will be done, it is the way that I would ask the people in the <coughs> audience and members in the international community just to send me back, to send me their bitcoins or their ethereums, expecting that in one year or in two years, the roadmap will solve the problem. Now, let's go over practical examples. This is what I mentioned before. May 2015, 88% of the cryptocurrencies, they were entirely about speculation. You weren't wrong. If you say Bitcoin, it only works for the dark markets and for drugs, you were quite accurate. You might be a libertarian, an anarcho-capitalist, fighting the state as a political ideology. Yeah, but it's usually just for speculation. As we move forward, from 88 it becomes 78 percent, then it becomes 47 percent. This is what we call Bitcoin dominance. And from Bitcoin being the maximum of 45, uh, 47 percent, Ethereum raised 17 percent. Which one is the next one? Ripple. <laughs> Rise to 19%. Litecoin, Monero, and Dash started getting more prevalence as for the next year. It would be very likely that in May 2018, even this would shrink even smaller. And the Bitcoin dominance, instead of being 88, 80%, 47%, might even go to 35% because of the diversification that, that now. It's not about trading, it's not about speculation as if you would be in forex market, but it becomes a part of how do we integrate it into society. And now as we have seven cryptocurrencies, 
probably by the end of the year we would have 50 and, and then 30, 35, 40, up to 100 within the next year. So what we build in our company, it's portfolios. One of the ideas is if you don't have enough time or idea of how the cryptocurrencies are built and how and under which circumstances should you invest them, we've have created different portfolios for different audiences that want to invest a different amount of money. This is one of the most important ones. And this is what we would believe that it would be the future. This is what we don't necessarily tell you to invest if you're not very knowledgeable about cryptography. But within the next two to five years, we would see the convergence within Bitcoin and blockchain at the centers with all of the major transnational and emerging disruptive technologies. I will not talk specifically about the companies, but I will tell you about the business model that these industries are using. One of them is IOTA, you might have heard of it. It's one of the largest ones, it's about IOT. The way that it would be used is I, IOT, it's Internet of Things, which relates to smart cities, smartphones, smart meters. So instead of you having to go back and pay, if you park your car, having to go back and go back to the perimeter and put coins inside of it, you would be able to get a cryptocurrency that automatically would withdraw the amount of money if you stay one hour, two hours, or three hours. Sapiens and Numerai are part of artificial intelligence cryptocurrencies. In the future, we would see how the black boxes operate to tell you when should we buy or sell any asset, any, crypto any cryptocurrency, any gold, any commodity, any system, when should we buy and for you to have information to say, oh, right now, we should be buying dollars instead of pounds, or pounds instead of euros, or euros instead of Romanian uh, leo. For you to have access to that information, you would have to buy a token. And that token is a cryptocurrency. And voxels would be a combination between mixed reality, augmented reality, as a Pokemon Go, but also virtual reality in terms of a headset. And this would be very used within the gaming industry. These are one of the three most visible examples of one of the categories of cryptocurrencies that are disruptive technologies. We also go to the area of marketing. We also go with prediction markets or oracles, the art of forecasting. The way that they operate is about making a poll. So I would ask you people, how much would this be worth? I would ask you three questions. Would you pay a hundred pounds for this product? Yes or no? And then for you to answer the question in an international decentralized distributed way, thousands of people answering this question, yes or no, I would pay you a token. I would give you an exchange, one auger, one gnosis, one winks. So would you pay a hundred pounds for this? Yes. And some of them would say no. And in that sense, we get to what is the price prediction? What is the likelihood, me as an entrepreneur, a small entrepreneur that is going to launch a product, what is the likelihood of it going forward? The second part is giving you different options. Would you pay 50 pounds, 60 pounds, 70 pounds, 80 pounds, 90 pounds? How much would you pay for this? And if you answer that question, I would pay you back for answering the question in terms of a cryptocurrency which is auger agnosis. And the third model, it's within ranges. How much would you believe that a Tascan model, it would be worth it? Would it be worth, and then you would answer it. I believe that it's going to be from 80 to 120, 100 to 150, 150 to 220. And for you to answer that, I would pay you in terms of a cryptocurrency. Tell me whenever I need to go quicker. Third part is about social media. The social media is whenever you have one system that it goes in terms of social media. This is a newspaper like the New York Times. This is LinkedIn. This is WhatsApp. I will not talk in details about the specific, but I would give you red, like the characteristic that this industry is operating. Why would you create another newspaper? 
because your freedom of speech is at stake. Because if you publish offensive content on Facebook or on Twitter, they might ban you if they believe that you're a Nazi, a white supremacist, that you voted for Brexit, or you go among those lines. <laughs> you cannot have all the time to answer emails or to answer recruiters. So if you answer, if you add me up in, in LinkedIn, which you can do, by the way, and you, you might have, or some people might have dozens or even hundreds of messages that they have to reply. Many of them, they will not reply. But if you reply to my message, I own my personal data, and I would be paying you back in terms of a token. And the way that many of the systems operate, not specifically Kim, is the way that I would compete against WhatsApp or Telegram or Signal is if you download my app, and if you tell your friends to use my app, Kim, instead of WhatsApp, I would pay you for using this app. Just downloading it, the, your app, into your phone would give you a payment, a system payment, that would, in terms of a cryptocurrency. These are some of the other ones. I will only speak about BitNation. Advice, I'm part of it, so I'm giving an <coughs> opinion. The idea of this is to work for identity management, digital identity. The idea of Wix is to create a market force of unregulated ideas. The way that the nation operates is to eliminate the process and the idea of the nation state, of the government as a centralized form of violence and oppression that enables a global apartheid, where people from the Arab world or from India or many places in Africa and Latin America do not have financial accesses uh, to banks or to financial services because of their nationality, a discrimination based on their nationality that many of us, uh, Americans, Mexicans, British, French, do not suffer, but people in India suffer. So a, a legal justice system where for you to use parts of the nation, you would be buying a token. And buying the token would give you access to private arbitrage. And the way that blockchain operate as the center of trust, as a machine of trust, would be to create a contract between two individuals, peer to peer. Doesn't matter if they're British, French, Chinese, Nigerian, or from Malaysia. Those two individuals would create their own laws according to whatever they believe that would be the future, according to whatever they believe that is going to be their own uh, agreements. Not what the British Constitution says, the American Constitution says, or the Mexican or Chinese Constitution says. Whatever you two guys agree to create an agreement in terms of marriage, instead of child protection, instead of any commercial trade. I think that I should do uh, penalizing and moving forward. So uh, in, in our company, we use different tools of evaluation. I will not mention it, I will go very quick, but it's essentially about the team. We cannot predict what would be the future. This presentation in one month or one year might be useless, might be irrelevant, and might be totally obsolete. What we have, it's a very experienced team of people that can predict and anticipate what are the upcoming trends. So once they are in the market, we already knew them. We mapped them from months from before. Whenever you try to do a cryptocurrency, understand what is market competition. Does this project exist somewhere else? What is the team that they have? And what is the loyalty? How, how do people get together for them to create a cryptocurrency? Otherwise, you're creating a Tesos, a cryptocurrency that went $200 million up to, I think, $20 million in less, in very, very few months. That's why investing in ICOs as an initial tool of offering, my idea and goal would tell you, go on, invest, I recommend you. On a practical way, you would be wasting your money in a desperate way in a very, very, very massive way. <laughs> this is the way that ICOs operates. This is how you would have to finish something in here that is called live or production. This is the traditional technical way of creating something. For you to create an ICO, you just need to stop somewhere in here. An MVP includes a demo, not necessarily you need to have a demo, and you need to have a proof of concept. The proof of concept is the white paper. 
the ideation includes idea validation. Why do I believe that we've identified a problem, the problem can be solved, the problem should be solved? That's a totally different thing. 90% of the time that I, that I speak with uh, financial investors, they see, I see a problem, I have a solution, I need to solve it. No, no, no. The process, the marginal cost of solving the solution, of creating the solution, it outscomes uh, the reward. So most of the time when I speak with uh, financial advisors or financial services bankers, they understand the problem. Banking is a massive problem. The unbanked population, digital identity, financial inclusion, there's large opportunity. Is it worth solving it? 90% of the times, no. If you want to see which one is the 1% of the time, I would invite you to come to one of the uh, next sessions that I'm going to have next Thursday in WeWork. Next Thursday, 2nd of November, in WeWork Wall Street, and you can look more about the event on Eventbrite. I thank you very much for your time, and I thought I'd give you some help. Thank you very much. Actually, if you want to stick around for a minute, just while we swap the tech over, um, I think we'll bring in a quick question now. Anyone ready for a question for Leo? Julio, can I just ask, what, what is the advantage of having so many different cryptocurrencies? Surely it just uh, creates a similar complexity to having thousands of different currencies in the world, physical currencies. So it goes in three ways. Cryptocurrencies is not necessarily a way of, of getting equity or shares in a company. It creates open source code and upper source uh, technology and software. Meaning what changes is that you don't know how does Facebook or Google or, a or LEC operates internally. The way with open source, you, it allows you to vet and validate that what says it, that it's written in the code would actually be executed within a number of uh, characteristics. The second thing that changes within ICOs is uh, a distribution of crowdsourcing. You don't need no, to I be think, I think an I investor. I think a different question, Julio, which is about the proliferation of different cryptocurrencies. Why not just have a single cryptocurrency? Uh, because each cryptocurrency serves a different purpose. If you're a Bitcoin maximalist, as me, you would believe that all of the, the cryptocurrencies would mutate, would migrate into Ethereum, and Ethereum will disappear. And every other cryptocurrency would be built on top of Ethereum. The second reason is about option, about choice. What Bitcoin is, is a political ideology created by anarcho-capitalist groups, who are called cypherpunks, that wanted to provide you an exit to the current system where we have a system of control of money that excludes the large amount of the population in developing countries. So if you believe uh, in this uh, anarcho-capitalist ideas, you might be going more with the Bitcoin maximalist instead of a traditional Ethereum control sensor, control centralized and sensor company that is Ethereum. Perfect. Um, can we have a round of applause for our outgoing studio and our incoming